Welcome to The National Pulse. I'm Raheem Kassam, editor-in-chief of thenationalpulse.com. Let's get cracking. Get it? You saw the cracking today, or at least some of its tentacles in the form of the press conference that we just saw. It was a long, old press conference. I was listening to it. I commend it to all of you out there. If you want a comprehensive, detailed analysis of what took place at this last election, you've got to go back and watch the full, I think it was almost two hours, press conference with Rudy Giuliani, Sidney Powell, Jenna Ellis, and the whole rest of the team up there. Now, there are people in the media who will tell you that nothing was said at the press conference. Don't even bother watching it. CNN didn't even bother covering it. Oh, they sent a reporter into the room. We'll play you a clip from that in just a moment. But they wouldn't cover it. And those that did cover it mocked it. But I encourage you all to watch it. Watch it. Listen to the detail. We actually have it as our top story in the National Pulse's breaking section. So after this show, whenever you want this evening, take the time. You don't even need to watch the whole thing. Put your headphones in, go and walk around, whatever you want to do. Just listen to the points being made in that press conference. And the lightweights in the media are tweeting along and will bring you some of their commentary in the next couple of minutes. But I want to start with Fox News. The perennial disappointment that is Fox News. It's not even my words. I get messages from Fox News producers, Fox News staffers, Fox News employees who have been there for years and years and years telling me, Raheem, we cannot believe what we're being told to report. And more to the point, what we're being told we're not allowed to report. More and more people from the inside are coming to me and complaining. And I want to play you this from, C- uh, I, see, I said CNN. It's actually Fox. It's, it's, they're interchangeable. And that was a genuine accident. Play this from Fox's Kristen Fisher immediately after the press conference today. Listen to this. It was certainly a colorful news conference from Rudy Giuliani, but it was light on facts. So much of what he said was simply not true or has already been thrown out in court. And, uh, you know, Giuliani, he opened by making this really bold and baseless claim that uh, a lot of this alleged nationwide voter fraud that he's referring to all came from one centralized place. He called it a nationwide conspiracy. Uh, and yet, he failed to provide any hard evidence to back up that one specific claim, especially when you're dealing with uh, a claim that really cuts to the core of our democratic process. Now, in Pennsylvania, Giuliani continued to claim widespread voter fraud in Philadelphia, even though he has already said in court, and I quote, this is not a fraud case. So what he's saying in public, not under oath, is different from what he said in court. Moving on to Michigan, where the Trump campaign dropped its final federal lawsuit just this morning after two Republican canvassers in Wayne County say they now want to rescind their votes to certify the election. Giuliani says they dropped the lawsuit because the state did decertify, but that is not true. The results were certified in Michigan on Tuesday, and Biden won. As for evidence, well, Giuliani kept holding up pages and pages of what he says are sworn affidavits, hundreds of them, people claiming voter fraud and irregularities, but he's declining to show them, to show all of them at least, and listen to his explanation why. I can't give you all these affidavits, because if I do, these people will be harassed, they'll be threatened, they may lose their job. We have a hundred more of these. I can't show them to you because those people don't want to be harassed. They don't want to be, have their lives torn apart. Now up on that stage with Giuliani was a big poster with the headline, multiple paths to victory. But Giuliani never credibly explained a single path, let alone multiple ones. So Dana, the fact remains that the Trump campaign has yet to provide, at least in court, hard evidence of voter fraud and irregularities widespread enough to overturn the outcome of the election and to effectively challenge President-elect Joe Biden's stance uh, as the president-elect. Dana? Kristen Fisher, thank you. 
Kristen Fisher is the daughter of two NASA employees, by the way, but it seems this, in this case the apple fell far away from the tree. Unable to follow the case that was laid out, mostly because the media has made a job of not following the case as it's uh, been laid out by people who are signing affidavits, people who are on the ground, as I was in Philadelphia immediately after the election, people who are in detail going through what happened with this election, who are researching this and who are reporting on it, unable to follow all of that. Fox News and the rest of the media as well, by the way, reverts and resorts to calling all of it a conspiracy theory. That's my Brian Stelter impression again. Speaking of Brian Stelter, why don't we get his tweet up here if we can. I want to show you what in mid-press conference CNN's egg in a suit was saying about what Giuliani, Jenna Ellis, Sidney Powell and the rest. Let's put that up on the screen here for the audience now. Brian Stelter says, remember all the concerns about whether the network's would air Trump's I won speech live. Fox News, Newsmax and OAN are all airing Rudy's Dems cheated presser live right now, full of bull. You missed something, egg in a suit. Dime store George Costanza. You missed out Real America's Voice that was airing it also. And full of bull. He didn't even get to the end of the press conference before declaring it full of bull. I love bull. I'm Brian Stelter. When we come back, we've got more to show you. Oliver Darcy, Maggie Haberman, and so much more from the press conference. Stick around. We've got some breaking news in this hour as well. Molly McCann joins us too. We'll be right back. Well, while egg in a suit, Brian Stelter continues to call pretty serious and well-documented allegations from Donald Trump's, President Trump's legal team, full of bull, his buddy, his little, uh, I don't know, what is, what is the guy that, that runs in front of the, uh, of the you, know that, uh, you know that ice game where they have the ice and the sweeper, right? The sweeper, curling, the sweeper. Right, what, 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 the sweeper Oliver Darcy. Let's see what Oliver Darcy has been saying on, uh, on social media as well. Okay, so Oliver Darcy is CNN's, I don't know, like Twitter PR guy. He basically goes on Twitter and gives you the CNN line, for those of you that don't know him. Terrible, terrible stress these people are under at CNN, just losing all their hair so quickly. Brian Stelter, Oliver Darcy... It's just a, it's a network of, of eggs. All right, look, at what point do news orgs start prominently identifying these Trump lawyers as conspiracy theorists? How much daylight is there between the outlandish claims they are making and those of someone like Alex Jones? Just leave that on the screen there for a second, please. And ladies and gentlemen, consider this. And, and after this show, I'm going to put this as a clip out on social media, and I want you to send it to all of your Democrat friends, all of the people who uh, are in your life that think Joe Biden fairly won this election. OK, so consider this. CNN and Oliver Darcy want you to think of accomplished lawyers, people who have taken down the New York Mafia, people who have represented General Flynn in a case where it's very clear now, four years later, that General Flynn didn't do anything wrong. Other lawyers who are very successful in their careers, they want you to think of them as conspiracy theorists. Why do they want you to think of them as conspiracy theorists? Because if you think of them as conspiracy theorists, then people like Oliver Darcy don't actually have to do their jobs in reporting the news. They rely on your bias that they have built into you, that they have gaslit into you, so that you just reject the premise from the outset, so that you don't even listen to the arguments of Rudy Giuliani and, and, and beyond. You are being told that these people are conspiracy theorists. But now think about it the other way. CNN is one of the biggest news organizations that told you that Donald Trump colluded with Russia. Four years of investigations proved that to be entirely false. 
a massive waste of taxpayer money, a massive waste of the nation's morale, a massive attack on the democratic process here in the United States. CNN is also the news outlet who put fraudster lawyer, another egg, Michael Avenatti, on camera night in, night out, making false, spurious and erroneous accusations, all the while he was defrauding people and was convicted of that. There were people on CNN who were saying that Michael Avenatti should run for president. And this is what Oliver Darcy wants you to believe now. Oliver Darcy doesn't want to have to do what is supposed to be his job, journalism, reporting, investigating the news. Oliver Darcy, Oliver Darcy can suck it. Because the Kraken was released today. And Kristen Fisher and the rest of them. Let's move on here. Let's go to this NPR guy. I had never even heard of this dude before. He popped up in my Twitter feed earlier on. I thought, we've got to, we've got to show this, right? So when Sidney Powell in the press conference today starts talking about Dominion voting systems and Smartmatic, which all of the great patriots out there who have been doing their own research, they already know about this stuff. They know exactly where it came from. They know exactly where it started. So no amount of fact-checking by the New York Times, by the Washington Post, and by NPR's Peter Sagal on Twitter is going to change their minds about something that they've already seen the facts of. He says Sidney Powell, who is also Michael Flynn's lawyer, is now claiming that Hugo Chavez himself, who died in 2013, oversaw the creation of the software that stole the election from Donald Trump. Now, you see what he's doing there. He's putting it, he's framing it in such a way that it sounds ridiculous, right? Chavez is dead. She's saying that a dead guy made this system. Yeah, except the system was made in 2004 by Smartmatic for then alive Hugo Chavez, who wanted to defraud the Venezuelan people and did out of their vote. Why? Because he had lost a, a, a referendum of some sort uh, in the years prior and decided that's never going to happen again. I'm a strong man. I'm a dictator. And these guys, the software company is going to help me rig the election. He didn't do it after he is dead. And nobody claimed that. Idiot, Peter. And let's move on to my favorite idiot, Maggie Haberman of The New York Times. Slimy, slimy New York Times. The same New York Times, by the way, that published uncritically excerpts of Mein Kampf. Maggie Haberman says, since these machines were also used for votes that led to Republican wins, Powell is calling into question everything the GOP won too. Doesn't Maggie get it? So what? The point is that these lawyers are making is that the election process lacks integrity. The systems lack integrity. They are not even approaching this from a partisan perspective. You listen to that two hour press conference. Are they Republicans? Sure. But they're showing you and Maggie's proving it in her tweet, the idiot. She's proving it. She admits that they're being nonpartisan about the way they're calling the results into question. And that actually, if there were some erroneous GOP votes in there as well, maybe they'd get struck off too. Who cares? Let's have integrity. Is the point. But my favorite moments of the press conference today was when somebody, a reporter, didn't identify themselves. And Mayor Giuliani had to ask... Where are you from? Let's roll the clip. What publication are you with? CNN. <laughs> what publication are you with? CNN. <laughs> it's the best thing about it was it wasn't just Mayor Giuliani laughing. It was everyone in the room laughing at the CNN reporter because a they knew that CNN wasn't covering it. But they sent a reporter into the room anyway to ask a hostile and stupid question, a dumb question, an idiot's question, an ignorant question, a question designed to mislead. And I just love the fact that everybody else in the room laughed, knowing that a CNN question was not going to be worth the squeeze. We do have some breaking news in this hour as well. We've got to get to it. We're going to be back after this short break. Molly McCann will join us off council with Sidney Powell, who was up there on stage earlier today. Natalie Winters is in the studio here with us. She'll be breaking some news about 
Dr. Jill Biden and her chief of staff. Stay tuned. We'll be right back. Well, you are living through and observing in real time a, a sea change in conservative media, and I'm sure a lot of you have been a part of it in terms of turning a certain channel on your televisions off. And look, if that channel wants to go back to being a real news outlet and representing the truth, then I'm sure some people will have it within them to forgive, as Americans do, and forget, go back, be wary, of course. But unfortunately, Fox doesn't appear to be the only conservative-leaning network that's having some second thoughts about where they sit on the media's own kind of political compass. I want to play you this clip from earlier on in the press conference as well. Let's roll it here. Question from a one last question. One last question. One last question from a reasonable civil person. Yeah, you are not. Yes. I'm not a reasonable person? No, her, she isn't. Okay, right. Well, I'll, we'll find out. I'm from the Daily Caller, for the record. Oh, there we go. If the Great. courts don't let you present these cases like Jenna just said, will you give the entire bulk of the evidence to the media to review? And if so, when? Or are you going to drag this thing out like the Hunter Biden hard drive again? We're not going to drag it out. I mean, it's ridiculous for you to say we're dragging it out. Al Gore, Al Gore had a lot more time than we've had, and we've had two weeks to, to investigate. So that's also completely unfair to say we're dragging it out. Also, if we're going to present things in court, if we present it to you, judges are not going to be very happy with us. And finally, I have to tell you, our witnesses don't want to be exposed to the tender mercies of a vicious press. I have great difficulty getting those witnesses that I did reveal to allow me to do it. They don't trust you. They don't like you. They think you put their lives in jeopardy with the spin that you put on what's going on here and with the unfairness in which you cover it. It's not easy to reveal the things that they tell me. So the answer is no. The answer is I can't do it because I can't, I can't put a witness's life in jeopardy or a person who thinks there's life in jeopardy. This woman tells me we have lawyers dropping out of the case. We have lawyers dropping out of the case because they're being threatened with destruction of their careers, destruction of their livelihood, and in some cases, destruction of their lives. That comes about because of the hysterical way in which you... Okay. The point of that clip was the question. The question by the Daily Caller's Christian Datok. Now, I don't know Christian Datok in person. We've DM'd a couple of times in the past. He's been asking me about the War Room show. I have no problems with Christian Datok, but I do have a problem with Christian Datok. Is that is how you I don't even know how to pronounce his name. Um, I do have a problem with the line of questioning. The line of questioning, as you heard it there, was, are you going to drag this out like Hunter Biden's hard drive? And one of his colleagues at the Daily Caller that backed him up on social media immediately after asking that question, Chuck Ross, said uh, that Datok asked Giuliani a similar question about releasing evidence regarding the Hunter Biden laptop and got a similar response. Giuliani refuses to put up. Well, I don't know if the Daily Caller, since Tucker Carlson sold his shares in it, or whatever has happened over there. I don't know if they're just badly sourced in this town, apart from taking print-offs from Mitch McConnell's printer, from his chief of staff's printer, or what the line of the day is amongst the Republican establishment. I don't know. But I got my hands on the hard drive pretty easily. Why didn't Christian reach out to us? He knew he had it. He watches the war room. Chuck Ross knew we had it. The Daily Caller folks knew he, we had it. Why didn't they just text me? They all have my number. They can all DM me. They all follow me back. Instead, they chose to ask Giuliani a question about dragging the hard drive out and then report that Giuliani refuses to put up. I don't know. I don't know what's going on over at the Daily Caller either. All I do know, and I can promise you, is that we will have no such Trump derangement syndrome here at the National Pulse. It will never guide who we are as reporters, as investigators, and as, as people who care about the truth, just ordinary humans who care about the truth. Speaking of 
Well, I was going to say an ordinary human. I say extraordinary human who cares about the truth. Molly McCann joins us of council with Sidney Powell to reflect on what we saw this morning slash afternoon in this press conference. It, it always feels like morning, uh, uh, Molly, when we get off the show. Uh, but I f always forget that the show ends at noon. So it's afternoon. This afternoon and the press conference kicked off. It was a long old press conference, but I thought it was pretty detailed. What do you think? I thought it was excellent, Raheem. You and I have discussed the need for the Trump campaign in general to be out uh, press conferencing more often. So I thought it was excellent to see all of the lead attorneys lined up there presenting, um, as Jenna Ellis said, the opening statement of this case. And I thought some really great points were made. They did dip into good detail, but some of the overarching themes that they presented really rebutted a lot of what the media has been peddling recently to the American people, in particular, this idea that there is no evidence. It's like people need, it's like the nation needs to take a 1L criminal law course. These affidavits are evidence and can be presented in court. Frankly, uh, even circumstantial evidence is perfectly good evidence in court, but this is direct evidence. It's very powerful. And the number of affidavits we're seeing in some of these filings is truly extraordinary. So I thought that point was really excellent. I also liked the point that Giuliani made, and you've touched on it briefly. The press is always talking about how Trump foments dangerous situations. But in fact, the press right now, because they're covering up so much and they're covering this in such a biased fashion, they have created a dangerous situation for the attorneys and the witnesses in these cases across the nation. And it's, it's truly terrifying in the United States to fear for your life if you're working a, a legal case or if you're coming forward as a whistleblower. It really is shocking. Yeah, and Molly, yeah. you know, not to uh, even necessarily stress any one person or one outlet that's doing this, but it seems like the line from the media today is that this wasn't good enough because we can't see all the affidavits. But in order for somebody to want to sign an affidavit like that, you know, some level of uh, anonymity, some level of shielding is going to be required because of the, the situation the media itself has created around this thing. To portray anybody that goes against the narrative um, that, that there was no fraud in this election as a, as a conspiracy theorist or a kook or a loon or somebody that is dangerous in and of themselves, they've done that. They've put that on those people. And now they're turning around saying, ah, look, they're not even brave enough to come out. Look at what happened to the people in Michigan who were brave enough to do something. Thing. Their children were threatened. Their children, not even just them, were threatened as a result of something that they did in their political lives because they had taken an oath to do that very thing. And this is what we're dealing with here. I, you know, it, it boggles the mind, it baffles me, and it angers me, and it frustrates me deeply that we're in this situation and that there are conservative reporters, so called conservative reporters, that continue to toe the line of the eggs in suits over at CNN. We'll be back with Molly McCann, Natalie Winters, Alexander Priat joins us shortly as well. Kraken's out. You've got to go back and watch that. If you haven't watched the whole news conference from this morning, make sure you go and watch it. It was very detailed, and you, you're going to want to understand this detail. As this thing plays out, it is nowhere near being over. And by the way, even if it was over, and I want to bring Molly McCann of Council with Sydney Powell into this conversation before she takes us to Georgia, but even if it was over, Molly, even if Joe Biden was certified president-elect, we held our hands up and said, all right, you know, it's, it's over, it's too late, we can't do anything about it. We would still want to be having these conversations about all of the affidavits, about all of the witnesses, about all of the Dominion, the Smartmatic stuff, about everything that we're seeing um, in terms of ballot harvesting, um, naked ballots, provisionals, um, um, curing. It's everything, right? It, we talked about the stuffing the tail thing. This is the stuffing the everything approach that the Democrats appear to have taken. And we would, so we would continue that conversation on anyway. Am I, am I wrong? Would we drop this? Would I suddenly be reporting about, you know, what's going on in Hollywood or something? Well, you're not wrong. We certainly look the other way for some time now when we've had these uh, smaller discrepancies. One of the points that was made at the press conference is that um, the, the scale of the voting this time has exposed a type of fraud 
that most people were unaware of. There are two sorts of frauds going on here. One is Giuliani says we can win just on the old fashioned fraud, pointing out the illegal votes, pull, pull, pointing out the ballot stuffing. But what we're seeing now here and what we're uncovering is something for, far broader, far more systemic. And it's this, this electronic fraud using Dominion. And, and that, is, that is truly shocking. It, it shakes the foundations of our republic. And whether or not, whether Joe Biden would, was president now, whether he prevails and we are not able to move fast enough, the country must investigate this and we must fix this because it truly has, has shown that underneath everything, we have become a banana republic. All right. So take us to Georgia with you, Molly. Well, I know we wanted to go back around to Georgia now. So what are you seeing um, in Georgia? Well, I wanted to zip back to Lynn Wood's filings in the last in, in the last two days. Sometimes you can blow past the affidavits. But this morning I read through the I, I think there were at least 20 affidavits attached to one of his filings. And they might seem a little bit repetitive. But um, there are people coming from all different directions, some of them describing the same scenarios. And ultimately, it really is a, a drawing together of just significant evidence of misconduct in Georgia. But I also want to draw your readers' attention or your, your viewers' attention to um, two specific affidavits. One is the affidavit that Sydney has discussed from the South American, it's a redacted affidavit, and it describes how the system, the Dominion system, has been used in South America. And it's four or five pages long, and it's something that, that everyone should read. And then the second one is from an American company that has examined these different election management softwares. And they explain the story of why Texas rejected Dominion. And they explain also this move, I don't want to sound like a Luddite, but this move over the past 30 years from low tech to high tech, where our elections are with just a few centralized companies. And I really do think there are certain places in our system where, um, where slow is better and where things that don't work super fast are better. You see in Congress, we sometimes get frustrated by how slowly things move. That is not a bug. It is a feature of our system. Similarly, with voting, we really need to look to return to more low tech um, processes if we want to defend our election systems. But this affidavit is quite long. It's very good. It explains various flags that they have found in Dominion, which suggest massive, massive fraud. To the point where I think there were reports of, you know, being able to plug USB sticks into certain machines and get access to the back end of it, being told that, you know, a teenage hacker could get in, in, in into some of these systems. Um, we, we've seen all of this before. We've been told for so very long that things were just insurmountably technologically proficient, that they would work from day one. I mean, how much did the U.S. government, you'll remind me, because I was living back in London at the time and only hearing these stories sort of second or third hand through the British press, but how much did the U.S. government spend on that Obamacare website, which was supposed to be a completely foolproof operation, I believe crashed on day one, cost something like $2 billion to make. Um, you know, we were, we, and the other thing that occurred to me, Molly, is we were told under the election run under Obama and Biden that that was a pr profoundly hackable election. All these foreign actors and Russia and everyone else was trying to get their say in on the election and hacking through your Facebook and Cambridge Analytica was sticking things in your brain through your computer. But the election that was run under Trump, no, 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 nothing could have happened. It's foolproof. It's airtight. Everything's good now. Don't look at any of this evidence. There is more. All right, look, I was about to start screaming again. I've got to keep my blood pressure down. Molly, tell me, is there or is there not more evidence for a mass voter fraud scheme than there was evidence for a Russian interference in the last election? It's not even close. It's not even close it's because, as we know, there certainly was no collusion, Russian collusion. And the, the, the interference that the Russians created in the last election is, in my opinion, negligible. But uh, there's, the, the evidence here is stunning. I think you saw Sidney Powell get almost emotional when discussing how unpatriotic so many of these people are. And to your point about the tweet from Haberman, um, she's so surprised that they might be calling out Republicans. These attorneys are patriotic Americans ready to go after anyone, no matter your party, who has corrupted our system and jeopardized our liberty. And you better believe that when Sidney Powell says it. I mean, 
do you think these people are lying? Is Maggie Haberman just kind of lying about the context of all of this? Does she not understand that I get up here and I attack right wing people every day as much as I attack left wing people? You know, I, I, my my quest for the truth is not partisan. It doesn't know any bounds. And believe me, it's why I don't get invited to the D.C. cocktail parties anymore. I think that, I mean, I don't want to paint too broad a brush because so many of the several of the affidavits I read this morning in Lynn Wood's filing are from registered Democrats. So there are patriotic Democrats yeah. who have stepped forward, but too often we're seeing from the radical left, all they care about is their end game and they will knock down anything in their way, overlook any evidence. They have this almost moral sense of righteousness that it doesn't matter as long as they win. And that's a very, very dangerous attitude in a self-governing society. Molly, just tell our audience, remind our audience where they can uh, where they can find more of your updates, please. I'm at mollymccann.com and Molly McCann on Twitter. All right, and well, we hope to have you back very soon, Molly McCann of Council with Sydney Powell, giving us the daily update on the uh, on the mass fraud that's taken place all across the United States. And I am not telling you that because I think it to be true. I'm from a country where we've seen what voter fraud looks like. I know it, and I know this to be true. We'll be right back with Natalie Winters after this. So amidst all of these old establishment, stuffy, played out, boring, conservative news networks selling you out. I just want to remind you of a couple of things here, some actions that you can take to help us grow a news network that you rely on and you can continue to rely on to bring you the truth. You know, I don't get told before my shows what I'm allowed to talk about. I have editorial. And, oh, I can't come on here and start swearing and libeling people, but everybody has those rules. But nobody says, oh, you know what, actually, um, there, there was no fraud really at this election. So can you please pivot and talk about COVID-19 or something? No. So make sure you are subscribing to Real America's Voice, downloading the apps. You can get it off your, on your Roku's, on your Apple TV's. On all of that, just search either Real America's Voice or sometimes it shows up under America's Voice. You know, even if you're not going to use it, but you have one of those devices at home, help us reach more people. If you download it, it goes up the download chart. Even if you like watching it on your YouTube or on the National Pulse webpage instead, just do us a favor and get the apps anyway. And if you really want to do us a favor here at the National Pulse, you know, with, with two separate entities, America's Voice and the National Pulse, we work together very well. So the National Pulse is not funded by any big corporate backer. We don't have that big Long Island Breitbart money, right? We rely on you. You can see on the screen here, you can go to our webpage, thenationalpulse.com forward slash support. You can also go to fundrealnews.com and become a member. We've got different membership options and it just, it helps us grow. It helps us do more news. It helps us investigate more things. And I thank you. I thank you even for considering it. So speaking of real news, let's turn to Natalie Winters here in studio. Natalie, we have a great big new audience and the audience is growing every day, actually. So some people won't actually know <laughs> who Scoops is. <laughs> Scoops is the, is the reporter behind the National Pulse and, and all of the scoops we break there. Um, Natalie, you, you, you're, you are at the desk, you are at your computer 20 hours a day going through Hunter Biden's hard drive, Farrah filings, all these different documents, searching for what the media should, should be searching for, things that should be on the front page of the Wall Street Journal, for instance. And the story that you've got at the moment, I think, really, I mean, should be on the front page of papers like the Wall Street Journal. So walk us through what's the latest scoop. Sure. So Julissa Reynoso, who would serve as chief of staff to Jill Biden, note my use of the conditional tense there because that would require the Biden team surmounting and invalidating all of the Trump campaigns. Uh, mountains of evidence about the voter fraud we've witnessed in the last election. But nonetheless, she would hypothetically be Jill Biden's chief of staff if a Biden administration materializes. Julissa Reynoso. Yes. Okay. So 
Uh, when you read her bio, right, the one that the Biden team has put out, when you read the bio on the law firm page that she currently works at, or she was also an ambassador to Uruguay and essentially ran the Central America desk at State Department during the Obama administration. And all of those bios, there's one affiliation that appears to exist, according to the website of EB5 Visa uh, Funds, Visa Funds, that is just conveniently omitted from all of those biographies. And that is that she is on the advisory board of a company called EB-5 Visa Funds. So for those who aren't familiar with the EB-5 Visa program, it essentially allows very wealthy foreign nationals to buy American citizenship. Now there's a lot of ideological problems with the, the uh, premise that you could just buy American citizenship. Uh, well, surpass I mean, there are fundamental philosophical yes. constitutional problems and, with it. And exactly, and interestingly enough, the firm actually boasts on its website how they're experts at getting this, this process fast-tracked, saying, that quote, there are no requirements regarding age, business experience, or language skills, even talking about how even if you acquire this EB-5 uh, visa that you don't actually have to reside in the United States, meaning that it's not about individuals who really identify with uh, American culture, American values. It's really just a financial decision. Uh, but there's also really a host of fraud. It's very controversial. Even Democratic senators uh, have co-sponsored legislation to try to completely root out this visa track. Uh, as I said, a lot of times you see people on uh, on the American side of uh, things, bringing in foreign capital uh, to start certain businesses, oftentimes in the technology sector, they get arrested because uh, they f rarely follow the, the guidelines. There's a lot of loopholes that they like to exploit. But interestingly enough, upwards of 80% of this, this visa type goes to Chinese investors, overwhelmingly wow. Chinese Communist Party-linked investors. <laughs> uh, we had reported on this a few months ago, how they were uh, in the National Defense Act for, for this year, they were trying to kind of secretly put in a line that would have allowed even more Chinese nationals. And is this the same type of visa that uh, Mayor Muriel Bowser was working with Chinese communist investors on with the, with the developments here in D.C.? Exactly. It's high net worth individuals who want to use the money that they have, especially when you're dealing with well, China. Well, gave them. Exactly. Pe people who have made a lot of money off the backs of, of the Chinese people, right, uh, either through state-owned enterprises, frankly, slave labor. But interestingly enough, you look in this individual who's listed on uh, this firm's advisory board in the first three sentences of her bio really leverage her connections that she had from the State Department, uh, working as an ambassador, working in the Obama administration. And the, the uh, link is still active, meaning that it appears that she still does potentially uh, retain this position. I've reached out to the firm for comment. They've yet to respond, and, and I've inquired about what her role would look like uh, if a Biden administration does materialize, if she would still advise or consult. Uh, so just firm. to recap on this, and this is our lead story on the nationalpulse.com, um, Julissa Reynoso, who is listed as Jill Biden's chief of staff by the transition team, mm -hmm. um, is listed as an advisory board member for a firm that sells U.S. citizenship via the EB-5 visa program. And this is a complete, I mean, this is a scandal. Here's, here's the thing, when I was trying to come up for a, with a headline for this article, <laughs> you'll notice I use the word fraud racked, right? Mm -hmm. Fraud racked. So the headline of this article on our site is Jill Biden, chief of staff. There you go, you can see it on your screen. Jill Biden, chief of staff, selling US citizenship in fraud racked visa scheme abused by Chinese communists. What I want the audience to know, and what I want Natalie to know, is that I actually initially didn't have fraud racked in inverted commas, in quote marks, because it was, it was our headline rather than a quote from somebody. And then I actually went to Google and typed in fraud racked in speech marks. What's the first thing that comes up of all things on the internet when you type in fraud racked? EB-5 visas. EB-5 visas. I'm so I was like, oh, wow, we can actually put it in quotes as well, because it is actually called that fraud <laughs> rack. That's Jill Biden's chief of staff. Right. If you want to help support real news like that, doing real reporting, go over to the nationalpulse.com forward slash support. We return in just a moment with the Alexander Priet with an update from Pennsylvania. Stick around. Stay tuned. Welcome back to the National Pulse. We're still trying to connect with Alexandra Priya, but um, we'll, uh, we'll get that connection live as soon as we can, if we can. In the meantime, I want to go through a couple of things and recap a couple of the points we've been talking about here 
on the show today. Of course, the big news was the press conference from earlier on. And you're going to hear from a lot of the news outlets uh, on the center left and indeed on the center right, unfortunately, or ostensibly on the center right, um, that there was no smoking gun here, that there's nothing to see. It was interesting to me that while Rudy Giuliani was speaking up there, and look, we've all seen Rudy be a lot more loose and extemporaneous and, and perhaps rolled our eyes a couple of times. I'm sure he's rolled his eyes at himself a couple of times. But this was targeted. This was focused. This was comprehensive. This was wide ranging. This was detailed. And if you want to go and look at it in full, it's the lead story in the breaking news section over at thenationalpost.com. I want to make sure that everybody left, right, center, nothing, American, abroad, wherever, I want to make sure that everyone looks at that, everyone watches that. Because there were so many points in there that were so compelling about the case that's being made. And of course, why is the media telling you to look away? Why is the media telling you there's nothing to see there? Remember, it's just like Hillary Clinton's emails. Don't look at these drops. Don't look at these data dumps. We'll look at them for you and we'll tell you if there's anything to see. And it's the same thing with Hunter Biden's hard drive, right? Don't look at the New York Post. In fact, Twitter, take it down. OK, yes, sir, we'll take it down. Take it down. Ban the war room from Twitter. OK, yes, sir, we will do that also. Like the Gestapo just marching in footste footstep with each other, in lockstep, rather. I want to bring Alexandra Priya on now. She is a, uh, a political mind from Pennsylvania. She's been on the show before. Alexandra, what, what is going on with you? <laughs> Where are you? <laughs> are you? Are you in a flag? I, I, I had to have this up because I think that's the theme of the message I wanted to say. Because okay. exactly what you said. <laughs> okay. The difference between Donald Trump being president and success is whether or not every single case people come forward, Democrat or Republican, just like Molly said, and tell the people what happened to them. It's fine if you're a Democrat. And by the way, if you were marginalized as a Biden voter, that's fine. But the point is, the only way to get to the truth is by having people come forward. In Pennsylvania, let's say specifically, I know four people alone, myself, myself personally, whose voters, were, her votes were disenfranchised in Lackawanna County, when they went to vote, they were told, you've already voted before. Okay, this yeah. is not, yeah. how is that, what is the percentage of that to happen in one county to one person? Right. The significant numbers, I think the very powerful point that um, was made by Sydney today is the statistics are really extraordinarily um, disbelievable. I mean, I don't know how these yeah. numbers, you know. I mean, we've I, walked through these numbers before on this show. It's, it's been the statistics team that I've been working with now, or rather they, they've been doing all the hard work and we've just tr been trying to report it out accurately. You know, we've gone through a lot of these statistics and I've put these, uh, I put the whole PDFs out there, Alexandra, for the media to go to, but not even the Daily Caller will report it. Breitbart won't report it. Fox News won't report it. These aren't, you know, this isn't Raheem making things up on the spot and going, I've got all this data and statistics. I give them the report like we offered them Hunter Biden's hard drive. And these people are mad. They're insane. They won't take it. They want this country brought to its knees, Alexandra. Okay. Number one, the issue is the timeline is slightly against us. That's, that's the problem here. There are dates and times at which are set, obviously, throughout history, the number 270, okay? These numbers that the Democrats knew existed, they own county courthouses, they own governor's uh, houses that are used against us. OK, that's a fact. The, right. the Pennsylvania Supreme Court is 5-2 Democrat. OK, and they've they've done something that most people, even Democrats have said, are t is totally questionably unconstitutional. 
And they've used that to their, the Democrats have used that to their advantage. And take the case of Ron DeSantis, where we had basically a very prepared governor. They'd been through this for 20 years, and you can see the outcome. I don't believe that Donald Trump lost Pennsylvania by 80,000 votes, and he won in Florida by 300,000. I don't believe that. I don't believe that he lost Erie County, Pennsylvania, like he, like even though he won it last time four years ago. I think the most important point for for your viewers to understand is number one, we've got a hardcore lawyer in Sidney Powell and all the other and Rudy Giuliani and everybody there today. What this most important thing takes is action. You need to call your state senator. You need to call your United States senator. You even need to call your local mayor and say, it's it's to me whether I voted for Donald Trump or Joe Biden or not. The most important thing is for people to have inte- feeling of integrity in their own vote. And with 70 million people feeling like their vote was stolen and another 10 million, let's say, of Democrats who think this is very questionable, that's not a good sign for our democracy. That's certainly not going to heal the divide that Joe Biden wants to achieve, he claims. Alexander, we've got to, we're up against the break uh, or rather the end of the show here. Where can people follow you? How can they get more information from you and from Pennsylvania? I'm on A pre uh, on Twitter. Mm-hmm. And I would encourage everybody to just follow their local senator, congressman, even if they're Democrats. Please call them and just say, I just want the integrity of my vote. That's all. And that's the most important thing for this election, win, whether Donald Trump wins or loses. Yeah. Alexander, thank you for joining us here. I know we, we had some problems connecting with you and uh, we'll, we'll make sure we get you back soon for a longer segment. I don't know, maybe it was the, um, maybe it was the flag interfering with the, with the broadcast there. I don't like when people put up the fake background. Sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't. I just don't like it in general. I don't do it myself. But I, I, I take Alexandra's point that, that, that representing at the moment is so important. And obviously for all that flag represents, it's important to have it. Um, you know, represented um, on, 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 you know, whenever, we're, we're, if the guests wants to, to have that. And I think it's uh, commendable uh, to be such a patriot in such times where there are so few, right? I want to make sure that we uh, remind you to tune in tonight at 7 p.m. Eastern here on Real America's Voice for Republic at Risk. Dr. Gina Loudon will be joined by John Solomon from Just the News, Attorney Boris Epstein, David J. Harris Jr., and Real Real America's Voices, Amanda Head. You don't want to miss that tonight at 7 p.m. Stay tuned. David Brody and the water cooler is next. Head on over to the National Post of Palmer. Thank you for tuning in. We'll see you again tomorrow.